Lego games, they've been going on for quite some time. And one thing that we all remember is the levels. From those that were enjoyable and just great fun to play through. And then to those that were god damn terrible, just tedious, drawn out, frustrating, pointless and vehicle missions. You know when you hear that you're not in for a treat. So yeah, there's been some um, there's been some annoying levels over the years and today I'm going to compile them all together and we're going to be looking at the top 10 worst levels in Lego games. So yeah, sit back, try not to let the dark memories come forth and anyway, you know how it is. Cue the music. So, hello, hello, hello there. No, what, what am I doing? So, hello, hello, hello there, guys. I'm Rugged Eagle, and I do lots of LEGO content on my channel. So, if you do like what you see, feel free to subscribe. It is up to you. And go to drop a like. That'd be, a, that'd be very nice of you. Anyway, let's get into the rules and regulations. So, yeah, the rules are very, very simple. If the level is crap, it makes the list. <laughs> so I'm going to try and pull in different levels from different LEGO games because I could easily fill this list up with vehicle missions. But I'm going to try and differentiate it and pull out the worst levels from certain LEGO games. Alrighty then, so it's time to take a blast of the past and let them dark memories come forth. Let's look at the top 10 worst levels in LEGO games. So coming in in no particular order, at number 10 is from LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens Chapter 7, the Resistance. So yeah, The Force Awakens is already bad enough. It literally did one movie and made it into an entire game. And Chapter 7 of The Force Awakens is just the worst level ever. There is no point of this level at all. It is literally a level to open your own front door. It is that stupid. I'm, I'm not even lying here. Seriously, that is the goal of the level. And yes, this does not happen in the Star Wars movie, The Force Awakens. It does not happen at all. And like I said, the entire level, in summary, you are basically just trying to open your own front door. It's like when you lose your keys and you're looking around your house just to open the door. That is this level in a summary. So yeah, get a, get a load of this. You finally open the annoying front door. You go through the door and then you are greeted with yet again another door to open. Like I said, it's like you've finally opened your front door. You've found your keys and now you get to your car and you've lost your car keys. This is this level in summary. So yeah, once you finally open the second door, you then find the map to Luke Skywalker and then you think the level has finally ended. But it has not. You have then got to prepare the ship to take off. It's just a really annoying, tedious level. Next up on our list at number 9 is from LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2, I think we have a problem. I think we have a problem with this level. So basically, this level is a maze level. It's a really annoying maze level just filled to the brim with annoying puzzles and a little bit of parkour to spice up the level. So as I mentioned earlier, the level is literally filled to the brim of puzzles and you gotta work your way through the maze and the puzzles are nothing special, they're just tedious annoying little mini games and one of the worst puzzles in a LEGO game is shoved into this level and I absolutely despise them. Now I love the puzzles in a lot of LEGO games, I find them pretty fun, but this 9x9 tile thing is the worst thing ever, it is so annoying, sometimes you easily pass them, you do them in about 1 minute, not even that, you could even do it in 10 seconds, and sometimes you're literally sat there for a good 5 minutes just trying to solve this one single puzzle on this 9x9 tile thing, and it keeps giving you studs to kinda tease you on, I know how you're playing TT games, don't, <laughs> don't do that to me, this puzzle is oh, it's just terrible now along with that you are also split between two teams there's team one where you're playing as Doctor Strange and Captain Marvel and then there's team two where you're playing as Hulk and Captain America and you basically got to get both teams to the end of the maze and that just kind of makes it even more tedious once you've got team one to the end and you know you have to go back and get team two to the end it's just a little bit annoying and then finally, once you've worked your way through the maze that is flooded with a little bit of enemies and loads and loads of puzzles, you finally get to the end boss battle. The end boss battle, it's pretty decent. It's just a basic boss battle. It's nothing amazing, but it is the one highlight of this level. I didn't find the level too bad, but I know a lot of people who I've spoke to definitely found this level really hard to get through. Next up at number A is Ace Chemicals from Lego Batman 2. 
Oh, oh, this level, this level. Right, so it's okay. It's a decent level. You're playing through it, you're about 10 minutes in. You think, oh, it's an okay level, and you know, there's a bit of enemies coming in, the puzzles aren't too bad, and you're just working your way through it until you realise that this level is a good 50 minutes long. It's ridiculous. So yeah, this level literally hits you like a truck, especially if you're trying to play through LEGO Batman 2 for the second time. You're basically remembering this level. The first playthrough, you do realise that it's a really long level. Like I said, once you're 10 minutes in, you're thinking, oh, yeah, it's a pretty decent level. <laughs> and then it's like 50 minutes long and it just keeps going on and on and on. So the entire goal of the level is to basically sample these chemicals and a lot of the puzzles require Robin hazmat suit and a lot of people did not like this personally I didn't mind it yes it's not the greatest puzzles in the world but once you've made your way through it it's okay and then you move on to the second part of the level and the factory kind of sets on fire and you basically get to play as Superman and this is TT games way of dangling a carrot in front of you to say carry on playing this long level you've got Superman so yeah, I don't think Ace Chemicals is a terrible level in terms of level design. It just goes on for too long. If this level were cut down in half, I would be perfectly fine with this. And another thing is, it's literally the third level in the game, which gets even more annoying. You played through the first two levels, and then you get hit by this massive truck as you got to plow through an hour to do one single level. And that's a long time in a Lego game especially for kids. So next up at number seven, like I said, these are in no particular order. And the level is the weapons factory from Lego Star Wars 3, The Clone Wars. Now this level again falls under the same category as the Ace Chemicals level from Lego Batman 2. It just goes on for far too long. And the, basically the summary of the level, it's the ground battles from Lego Star Wars 3. And I absolutely love the ground battles in Lego Star Wars 3. I think they're really fun, but in this level, particular they are not fun at all so once you begin the level you basically do this ground battle and it's pretty fun the first time you do it and then the droid calls in more reinforcements and you've got to do it for a second time and i think you know where it's going once you've done it a second time the droid calls in even more reinforcements and every time you do it it just gets harder and harder and that's what makes it so tedious but yeah, obviously it makes sense. The more reinforcements he calls in, it's obviously going to get more harder and harder. But a lot of it is going back and forth, just destroying stuff, going to get a different vehicle to destroy something else. Another thing is you got to call in the troops to shoot at Summit Golden. And it just takes ages to destroy stuff in the levels, especially when you're just trying to destroy the little itty bitty things. You literally sat there with a blaster or a lightsaber swinging at Summit for like a minute. And this is coming from someone who absolutely loves the ground battles in LEGO Star Wars 3. I love them and I really do hope they make it into the Skywalker saga and once you've finally got your way through all three waves of reinforcements you then move to the second part of the level which is nowhere near as bad as the first part you then have to make your way through the catacombs as a Sulk and Barriss Offy and then you basically do a poggle the lesser boss fight it's a decent boss fight but it can get annoying when you keep getting ran over so yeah this level falls under the same category as the ace chemical level is it will literally just cut short a little bit it'd be a fair decent level Flying its way into number 6 is Lego Batman 1, the flight of the bat level. So this is finally our first vehicle mission on the list. Like I said, they're in no particular order, but Flight of the Bat can get pretty annoying. I played through it, and I obviously know this level. I played through LEGO Batman 1 quite a few times, and once you know this level, you can easily make your way through it. But the first time you play it, oh, it's not fun. So yeah, it follows the same formula that we all know and love from the vehicle missions in LEGO games. You basically got to find torpedoes and fire it at stuff, and you got to go back and forth. Yep, that's a vehicle mission in summary. And the one problem with the flight of the bat, it's not really like a linear level. You basically are flying around for half of it, just trying to figure out what to do. And if you're like me and you don't read the tips at the bottom, you're basically going to mess yourself up on this level big time. So I remember when I was younger, I was literally flying around in the Batwing for ages, trying to figure out how you get through this pipe on fire. And I didn't realise that you had to use the bat helicopter to basically pick up this bomb and tow it across. That's what took me ages as a kid to figure out on this level. Like I said, it's not linear and it's a pretty annoying level the first time you play through it. After that, it's a pretty easy level. You can do it in six to seven minutes tops. Next up at number five is Lego Indiana Jones 1 The Original Adventures Battle on the Bridge. 
Now, Battle on the Bridge. Battle on the Bridge is really weird for me. Like I said earlier, I'm trying to get in levels from different LEGO games, and I really do enjoy the beginning of Battle on the Bridge when you're trying to run away from the water as it's about to flood the cave. I think that's a really fun part of the level, and I do quite enjoy the first part. It's just the boss fight. I do not like the boss fight at all. I remember when I was a kid, I was stuck on the final boss battle of this level for quite some time. Back in the day when you used to go on YouTube and look up the guides for the level so you can finally figure it out, that were this level for me as a kid. And with me doing all my recent new LEGO content, going back and replaying LEGO Indie 1, still to this day, I do not like this boss fight. I don't know why, it just fuels me with anger for some reason. I think it was back when I was a kid and I got stuck on it, but yeah, I don't think Battle on the Bridge, the final boss battle, is that good. I just think it's really annoying. When you're just getting shot, you're losing your studs, they're falling off. Yeah. Don't. I, I need my studs. So yeah, like I said earlier, I really did enjoy the beginning bit of Battle on the Bridge when you're trying to escape from the water as it's about to flood the cave, working your way through the mountains. I do really enjoy the beginning of Battle on the Bridge, but is it just like my past fear as a child playing through that level coming up? It, it might be that. I was stuck in it for a while. Coming in at number four on the list is Felix Felicis from Lego Harry Potter years five to seven. I think I said that right. Felix Felicis... Felice size? I don't know. <laughs> That's the name of the level, though. <laughs> So yeah, this level is from LEGO Harry Potter's Years 5 to 7, and personally me, I prefer your LEGO Harry Potter's Years 1 to 4 more than 5 to 7, but I have to say, the graphics in Years 5 to 7 in the Harry Potter collection, they're actually pretty good. Anyway, moving back on track, personally in LEGO Harry Potter's Years 5 to 7, I did not think the Half-Blood Prince segment were that good in the game. Now I think that's down to the movie and not TT Games fault, because at the end of the day, the Half-Blood Prince is basically a setup for the Deathly Hallows. So like I said earlier, I'm trying to pull in levels from different LEGO games, and out of both of the LEGO Harry Potter games, this level for me is pretty much the worst level out of them LEGO Harry Potter games, and it is making my worst level list, because I just reckon it's a pointless level, and it's just pretty filler. Alright, so get a load of this. The one scene where Slughorn takes a bit of venom out of Aragog has been turned into an entire level just to do with taking some venom out of a dead spider. That is the level. But before you get onto the exciting bit of the level where you take Venom out of a dead spider, you have to fight through some plants and do some basic puzzles, and you have to use the Aquamenti spell, which is one thing I really do not like about LEGO Harry Potter years 5 to 7. You're literally just shooting water throughout half of the game. Now, I would say there is worse levels out there, because at the end of the day, this level only lasts a good 8 minutes if you know what you're doing and you can plough through it. But like I said, I'm trying to get levels from different LEGO games and not just pull out every single vehicle mission out of the bag. Yeah, because they are bad. I don't know, some vehicle missions are okay. Like, I quite like the Lego Batman Batmobile vehicle missions. Not all vehicle missions are bad, they're just not the best. Now moving on to our final three worst levels in Lego games. At number three, we have Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens Chapter 2. Escape from the Finalizer. Now, Escape from the Finalizer is the second level in LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens, and the beginning of the level, I really do enjoy this level. I think it's actually one of the best in The Force Awakens. I think we all can agree here, though. First level of The Force Awakens is the best level in that game. After that, it just kind of slowly goes off. <laughs> so yeah, once you eventually escape from the finalizer, you then go to like this vehicle part of the mission. You might like it. I quite enjoyed this little vehicle mission. I didn't think it was that bad. If you really do not like vehicle missions though, you'll probably just find this a chore to get through. And then once you complete that, you move on to the part of the level that I do not like at all. So yeah, the final part of this level, you are literally race scavenging in a broken Star Destroyer. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? So I think the main reason why this final part of this level is so annoying because once you've done the first two parts of this level, you're already half an hour into this level and the last bit is a good 15 minute to 20 minute long and it's the worst bit of the level and it's around in total a 50 minute level and the last part does not help. So yeah, it's a real shame because I didn't mind the first two parts of this level. And like I said to you, I don't think I need to explain why it's not a fun level. You're literally Ray scavenging in a broken Star Destroyer. End of. <laughs> so yeah, coming in at number two on the list is LEGO Indiana Jones 2, the final Crystal Skull boss fight. 
So yeah, the final boss fight of the Crystal Skull, it's nothing special, and in Indie 2, they've got this weird, weird obsession with every final boss to be this massive, gigantuous boss fight. I don't get what their obsession is with it. Like, every single boss fight in this game is just a giant boss. Now, I wanted to throw this one in there, because at the end of the day, the level isn't that bad. You can literally complete it in around four minutes, which is not that bad, but the second part of the boss fight is really annoying, especially with online multiplayer. When you're trying to jump onto the platforms and use Indy's whip, or it gets so frustrating, especially with the beam, that beam is so overpowered. Now before we move on to number one, like I said they're in no particular order, but let's just have a look back at some honourable mentions that nearly made the list. Now here are the levels that nearly made the list, and first up we have Falcon Fly, it's just a little bit of a boring level, you've got to keep getting torpedoes to destroy the asteroids, and it's just not a great vehicle level. Now along with that, we also have another vehicle mission from the Complete Saga. It's kind of like a mix between a vehicle mission and a regular mission, and that is the speeder bike chase from Episode 6. I actually found this level to be pretty annoying, where you got to keep chasing them, you're always missing them, you got to stop off and do some other little mini-games to carry on the speeder bike chase. It's not the best level, but it did improve on the basic vehicle mission. Now also making the list is another vehicle mission from the Complete Saga, and that is the pod racing level. And the thing is... I actually really enjoy the pod racing level. I must be on something. I, I don't know. Please don't get mad at me. I actually quite enjoy the pod racing. And I even prefer it when it's actually timing you. I think it gets really tense. But a lot of people find it annoying. So, you know, <laughs> each to their own. But anyway, making its way into number one on the list. Well, it's in no particular order. But it's Gunship Cavalry from the original Lego Star Wars 2 or the Complete Saga. I do think it is worse in the original trilogy. And it's not so bad in the complete saga but nevertheless this vehicle mission oh it is not fun so yeah gunship cavalry oh oh this really brings back dark memories from my childhood it's just it's not a great vehicle mission you gotta tow the bombs and it just gets really frustrating you let go of the bomb it rolls down the street oh it's so annoying, it's, it's just not a fun level. But anyway, that has been the top 10 worst levels in LEGO games. If you have gone to enjoy this video just before you go, please feel free to subscribe, it is up to you. And make sure you go drop a like if you did go to enjoy. Also, just before you go, please comment down below which is your least favourite level in a LEGO game. And also, if you want to watch even more LEGO content, I've ranked all the LEGO games, all the open worlds, the character rosters. You can check them all out in this playlist at the end of the video. Anyway, thank you for watching, guys, and I'll see you all in a bit. Adios.